Hello, Jeff. Uh, first question is about uh, your last movie, George, mm -hmm. that you spent almost 10 years making it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, I started in 2009, and uh, <clears throat> it's been a very adventurous project, and which uh, uh, came from a notion of his first name, uh, George Machunis, the founder and presario of Luxus. Uh, um, his, he was very interested in collectivity and communication among groups of artists that he drew into the Fluxus uh, sensibility and practice. And uh, the Fluxus idea for him was a lifestyle that was also a creative project and also a sense of being, <laughs> a kind of philosophical condition or a practice you could say. So uh, today or yesterday was the premiere the, the premiere in Europe of the finished movie and uh, we're having another screening this evening. And uh, I think it's a rare kind of film and it's quite long. It's a two hour and four minute movie. And um, I knew George Manchunas. I met him in New York in 1966 when uh, Yoko Ono brought me to his apartment in uh, Soho on West Broadway. And he was, to me, when I was a younger artist, uh, and a, a very unusual European kind of guy, and uh, uh, a peculiar kind of person, too, a very uh, measured kind of guy. And he was uh, quite strong in his personality, and um, he was quite strong in bringing his, his being to this world. <laughs> Certainly, you already understand. George. What is flux? Ye yes, uh, yeah, and um, then there are sort of indirect influences of, uh, oh, like... Um, uh. I worked with him three or four times in 1966 uh, on various parts of projects, and um, I also made a film for the first Fluxus Film Festival, and that film uh, was called Shout, and it was a, a simply uh, a, a minimalist kind of composition of two profiles of two men arguing with each other. And uh, it did not have sound, so it's only uh, uh, an example of shouting. George, what exactly is flux, George? Uh. So, um, uh, you know, I chose the the title of the film George because he was known as George. You know, everybody who was involved with Fluxus called him George, and um, so that's what started the project. And I knew that I knew of his adventurous life. Although I left New York in late '67 and moved to Los Angeles uh, to continue doing my art and my film work. Uh, however, uh, uh, and I also did some performance work in uh, Los Angeles at UCLA, and, and um, uh, I, I, I continued to cultivate in the memory and the practice of doing Fluxus-like works uh, while I was in Los Angeles, and uh, I got involved in making another film uh, in Los Angeles, which was a film called The Painter Sam Francis. And Sam Francis was a friend, and I filmed him uh, for from 1968 to 1977, painting uh, very large paintings, and I also interviewed him, and later finished that film in 2008. So that film had a 40-year history in the making. George was only nine years, so <clears throat> I'm doing better with George. And it is an odd film. In the screening last night, when it was finally over, uh, the audience was silent. <laughs> Nobody was saying anything. And I, so I walked up in front of the audience and looked at them and, you know, asked comments. Anybody have anything to say? And nobody had anything to say. And yet, I, and I thought maybe that it had failed. Uh, however, the, the, the conversation with the audience uh, was very good. And I asked, did you think it was a good film? And everybody said, yes, 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 it was very good, it was very good. Uh, because uh, the, 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 uh, 
dimensions of the media in the film, and I produced aggressively this film for nine years, and so I've collected some, managed to collect some very rare material about George Machunas and his life story, and uh, which was quite uh, iconoclastic, and uh, there are iconoclastic things in the movie that I think are challenging to a normal uh, sensibility of life and the value of living and the value of what art is and what its purpose is and how we can better use this notion of making art to make life better, I guess you could say, uh, philosophically speaking. I think that Fluxus had a very strong philosophical motive to it although the philosophy was pretty much informed by existential ideas, and existentialism doesn't really offer a great deal of hope. You know? <laughs> it's just it's like being. Uh, being existentialism is being, or dasien. And uh, that's challenging, I think, to individual people. It, the film wasn't, wasn't kind of in, trying to make you feel better. It wasn't trying to make you happy, although there are funny things in the film um, in any case, um, uh, I'm glad I made the film, and I think I did the right thing. I think it, I did a very good job of it. However, there could also be a much longer movie in this movie uh, to serve a greater idea of really what Fluxus was I internally, what Fluxus was. So, uh, however, I feel happy that I finished the film. And I'm hopeful that the film will be seen uh, as much as possible, and uh, hopefully in Europe and maybe other countries as well. The Papa of Fluxus did the best he could to bring us together and for the common good. Art for the people, art out in the streets, no more museums. No galleries to... The link between the artist George Machunas mm -hmm. and what's the purpose or the sense of art in society or what an artist is supposed to be nowadays mm -hmm. with the concept of modernism, avant-garde mm -hmm. and, uh, and also about a movement which has uh, many connections. It's not just a painting movement or a music movement, it's all together. Well, uh, uh, George Machus wrote a manifesto when he started Fluxus, and that manifesto was very much informed by the ideas coming from the essential first Russian revolution. Uh, Mayakovsky and other radical poets, architects, etc. And uh, that group was repressed by the following uh, Russian rulers, and uh, the essential beauties of uh, the Russian Revolution suffered because of that. However, George Machunas picked up on these essential ideas and uh, built these ideas into his concept of what Fluxus was. And uh, he felt basically that artists, really their primary job was in service to the community or society, to make society a better thing, which was the motive of the Russian Revolution. Now we were going to start a flux island, <laughs> a whole colony, you see, <laughs> like a whole country. <laughs> so with the United Nations representative, we start a colony there, start farming and so on. We went there to sort of survey the place. Uh, and he wanted he wanted artists to to be at service of uh, society and the community. And uh, in that sense, he, he was very critical of, of art as it existed when, <clears throat> in 62, when painting was really strong, especially American painting. And mm -hmm. abstract expressionism was quite strong, and he was radically against it. Uh, he was against that, and he was very much against the economy and the, uh, the, the, the a political uh, situation as it was oppressive for artists and mostly artists uh, uh, are, are unemployed, <laughs> I don't know, or unemployable. Uh, in any case, he felt that artists should do work that was in service to the society before 
uh, uh, the vanity of of, of being um, ego strong artists, although the ego was also quite strong in Fluxus. Uh, uh, however, it demonstrated itself in a very unique, uh, radical way uh, that, in fact, I think gave birth also to what we now call performance art. Uh, performance art, I think, was the, one of the great seeds of performance art was came out of Fluxus. And the first performances that happened uh, for Fluxus were in Wiesbaden, Germany, mm -hmm. and they were concerts of, of uh, concerts of actions by um, artists, poets, uh, composers, etc. And those actions were relatively meaningless. I mean, they would have something to do with some clapping your hands or stamping your foot, and. However, the presentation of these uh, relatively meaningless actions or demonstrations of actions were done in a very formal way, as if it were an important classical music presentation. The uh, concerts at the Wiesbaden uh, um, Auditorium, I guess it was, uh, that auditorium was used to uh, presenting concerts by Beethoven and Mozart and things like that. And here came these uh, odd people coming in presenting a concert with totally uh, oblique actions, you know. Mm -hmm. So it caused a great deal of attention in Western Europe then. And uh, uh, I eventually bought, I had to buy from the German television uh, a recording of those, those essential concerts. So those concerts established a very um, strong impression on the, the, quote, new art coming out of West Germany at the time. And uh, it, made a, it made a difference. And the, 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 the word, the name Fluxus became a brand that everybody sudden understood right away. Fluxus, oh, what is that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it, in my film, it keeps saying, what is Fluxus? We don't really know. It, it simply was a demonstration of, a, of an idea, which was really, when somebody the, asked me last night, well, what is Fluxus? And I said, well, the best thing I could imagine that it brings to the public is freedom, uh, uh, freedom to, uh, creative freedom, okay? And also within the, these definitions that Machunis established, and so and Fluxus was Machunis, and uh, he died in '76. Uh, however, the, the the practice still continues in, in ways, uh, many other ways. Yeah. This is really a fascinating answer to my question. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is kind of middle class artist. We are neither famous nor infamous nor unfamous. <laughs> just, we just exist. <laughs> What do you do? What do you do? We just, uh, we just get some bad jobs. The, the question is, what is art, in fact, and also maybe to make a difference or um, a standing bit uh, against uh, high art, hmm. which is low bro or low art and high art. How do you s see that? Well, the history of art goes back to the cave paintings. And the cave paintings were made in a very uh, direct way. I mean, to putting your handprint on a wall of a cave, for example, or to draw a horse or, or to model, uh, to replicate your own impressions. You know, you're, you're basically proving yourself to be there. I have seen a horse, or I am putting my handprint on this wall because I am, I am. <clears throat> That's very basic. And as history developed through time, different cultures cultivated different uh, kinds of uh, uh, creative imaginations. And uh, the Egyptians had a particular... Uh, uh, strong uh, effect on the uh, history of art and uh, I mean it goes way way back you know mm -hmm. so in the expression of art changes in culture as culture and civilization evolves and develops. To the workers it, who needs a, a five dollar gag? Right. <laughs> it's expensive but for the collector it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. And how long was the store open? 
Oh, uh, like uh, almost a couple of years. Two, Two years. years. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> not one thing. <laughs> pretty humorous in itself. Yeah, that's a funny event. <laughs> We were talking yesterday a bit about selling out and avant-garde. <laughs> well, what I meant by selling out is I meant, I mean, I'm making films now for the public. You know, I want the public to see these films. So that's what I mean when I'm selling out. I, I'm basically selling myself and uh, selling my own creative imagination and my work. And uh, my work is my life. I'm an artist and a filmmaker. And I... This is what I must do. I can't go hide somewhere. Uh, I, I'm happy to do uh, to do what I do, and I learn how to be as I go along. <laughs> like now, for example, you know, that's what I meant by selling out. Great. Uh, is there something more you would like to tell us about your movie or something else? I think it's a challenging film, although it's full of adventure and his life story was very adventurous. Uh, and I definitely feel I've done the right thing as far as making a movie about George Machunas and his life in Fluxus. However, there's a much greater story inside of that movie uh, that appears as only clip examples of these different dimensions of George Machunas' life. So, in a way, I've failed, I've succeeded in failing, or I've, uh, I have not failed in succeeding, <laughs> failed in success. I don't hope not, anyway. I mean, I hope that this movie gets some, some eyes, that people want to like it. However, it is, it is a very particular kind of movie for a very particular audience. Although, uh, you don't have to bring uh, your, uh, deep knowledge of art or art history to to appreciate and understand this movie. Uh, well, maybe, well, to appreciate it, to understand it, to understand the what, what it means, that's a big question even in my mind. So um, the movie means what it is. It is what it is. And, uh, and it is a story of a person's life. And uh, this this life, this person, was extraordinary and was involved with extraordinary uh, other people. You know, by the fact that I was able to show pictures uh, by uh, about uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, who were deep friends of George, uh, to me uh, is a good example of its value in a way. You know, that uh, and uh, the interview with Yoko and Henry Flint and Namjo Pike and, I thought these were all very rare things. Uh, these these people are not always accessible to the, uh, in a personal way, anyway, to the public. You know, the, you just get kind of demonstrations or acts as they're acting as themselves, etc. So I think my film gets a little bit more inside his relationships with these people who are in the film. And I think uh, I'm happy about that. I, I feel satisfied. I. I feel like I've done the right thing in that sense uh, for a documentary film. This is a documentary film. <clears throat> it's not fake, it's real. Uh, so in that sense, I, I think I'm, I'm, doing a, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a good Jeff Perkins as much as I can. Great, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodolfo. You're great.